In this video, I'll be proving that countable sets have measure zero, introducing the Cantor set, and then proving that it also has measure zero. So let's first prove it for countable sets. Let's say A is going to be the set of AI for I equals one to infinity. This is just from the definition of countable. We can list them using the natural numbers. So it might look something like this. If this is the real line, they definitely do not have to be in order, although I'm just drawing them in order so for simplicity's sake. Okay, then let epsilon be bigger than zero. This is a very common statement, and I will use this to prove that it has measure zero. Take the interval, I'll call them i k, and it's going to be the open set that goes from a k minus epsilon over 2 to the k, and it'll go up to a k plus epsilon over 2 to the k. So this is just putting an open interval of radius epsilon over 2 to the k around each point. So as we go further and further down this line, these intervals get exponentially smaller, and they all have constant radius. Then the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of the lengths of i k is going to be equal to the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of the radius epsilon over 2 to the k times 2. Due to the fact right here is a radius, the length of the entire interval is a diameter. Now the reason why I'm writing it like this and not simplifying the 2's is because I'm going to move the epsilon and the 2 outside. So that I'll have a 2 epsilon outside. And then this sum right here, very easily you know this from a basic calculus, is equal to 1. So that we just get 2 epsilon out the other side. So what I could have done is made these epsilon over 2 to the k plus 1's. Right? If I would have done that, this would have been just epsilon out the other side. It's that simple. So even though I introduced it using eps uh, a ball of radius epsilon over 2 to the k, I'm going to, um, I'm going to half that radius so that we just get a sum of the lengths equal to epsilon. What does this mean? Well, this right here is the sum of the lengths of open intervals. And that right there is going to be bigger than or equal to the Lebesgue measure of the set. Why is it bigger than or equal to the Lebesgue measure of the set? Well, because this is one of the elements of the set we're taking the enthemum of in the definition. That's just very basic. And I've used this uh, many times. So, what does that mean? Well, that means that the Lebesgue measure of A is less than or equal to epsilon for any epsilon bigger than zero, the epsilon lemma. Remember this from way back when I introduced this? The epsilon lemma says that if for epsilon bigger than zero, right here I have epsilon plus zero, so that means that the big measure of A is less than or equal to zero by that lemma. Guess what? Lebesgue measure of A, by definition of measures, has to be bigger than or equal to zero as well. So that means that the Lebesgue measure of A has to be equal to zero. Now a good example of this is the rationals. So A could be equal to Q. This is a proof that the rationals have Lebesgue measure zero, and that is a very important fact. So now, let's introduce the Cantor set. First of all, what is the Cantor set? Well, it's where I take the interval 0, 1. And what I do is I remove the middle third. So in here, I'm going to have the interval from 1 third to 2 third. Okay, and I just remove that interval. So that I get this new closed interval. Okay, and then in each of these, what I'll do is I'll remove the middle thirds of these. So here will be from 1 ninth to 2 ninth, and here will be 7 ninths to 8 ninths. So just remove the middle third again. Okay? And then what I do 
is I continue this on forever and ever. I just do that infinite amount of times and then the set I get out the other side is the one that I'm dealing with, the Cantor set. So the Cantor set is the set where you move the middle thirds of the closed intervals all the way down. So a formulation of this is that what we do is we take the intervals that we are removing. So I11, this is the stage, this is the level we're at, and this is the interval that we're removing. I11 is going to be the open set from one third to two third. That's the first open interval we remove. Okay, so I21 is then from one ninth to two ninth. Okay, that's that interval right there. Then of course I22 is going to be seven ninths to eight ninths. That's that interval right there. And so I n1 at the nth stage of this is going to be equal to the open interval from 1 over 3 to the n, 1 third, 1 ninth, the next would be 1 27th, until 2 over 3 to the n. And then we continue this down until I n 2 to the n minus 1. There are 2 to the n minus 1 intervals that we are removing. So this is going to be the open interval from 1 minus 2 over 3 to the n until 1 minus 1 over 3 to the n. The exact opposite. And so the nth Cantor set is going to be equal to the n minus 1th Cantor set removing the union from k equals 1 until 2 to the n minus 1 of i n k. So we're just removing all of these open sets. And then the Cantor set C is going to be the intersection from n equals 1 to infinity of Cn. Now, of course, C0 is just the entirety of uh, 0, 1. So just in case you didn't know, C0 is equal to the interval from 0 to 1. So that we have an inductive definition here. Okay, so now why does this have measure 0? Well, it's actually uncountable, so we can't use this argument. I will not prove that it's uncountable here, just know it is. Um, but the re how we do this is we prove that all these sets that we are removing are in fact of measure 1. So what we do is we take A, which is equal to the union from n equals 1 to infinity of the union from k equals 1 to 2 to the n minus 1 of i and k. So these are all the union of all of the open sets we're dealing with here. Okay, and then we figure out some stuff about the Lebesgue measure of this. Because I'm going to find out the sum of the lengths of all of these intervals. So the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the sum from k equals 1 to 2 to the n minus 1 of the length of i and k. Well, look at this. What you have to notice is that i11 has length 1 third. i21 has length 1 ninth. i22 has length 1 ninth. in1 has length 1 over 3 to the n. in2 has length 1 over 3 to the n. Blah, blah, blah. All the way up until in2 to the n minus 1, which has length 1 over 3 to the n. Every single open interval we're dealing with has length 1 over 3 to the n. So that in overall, the sum from n equals 1 to infinity, this sum right here is just going to be however many intervals we have times the common length, which is 1 over 3 to the n. Well, we have 2 to the n minus 1 intervals. We have 1 over 3 to the n as the length of those intervals, every single one. So that we get that the sum of these lengths is just 2 to the n minus 1 over 3 to the n. This has a very easy computation to figure out what it is. It's 1 third times the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 2 over 3 to the n minus 1, which is the sum of n equals 0 to that. So that here we get 1 third times, plug it into the formula, 1 over 1 minus 2 thirds. This is just simple geometric series. 
So this is 1 over 3 times 3, which is 1. So the sum of the lengths of all the intervals is going to be 1. Notice now that the Lebesgue measure of A is that it actually has to be equal to 1 due to the fact that this open cover is actually just the set itself so that any open cover has to contain this one so that this is in fact the greatest lower bound. So the Lebesgue measure of A is equal to 1. Well then, the Lebesgue measure of A union C. C here is just 0, 1 removing A. If you can't tell why, well, it's very basic straight from the definition here. Okay? C is just 0, 1 removing A. So that these are two disjoint sets whose union is 0, 1. Right? So the Lebesgue measure of A union C is equal to the Lebesgue measure of the interval from 0 to 1. Guess what? These are two disjoint sets. So this is equal to the Lebesgue measure of A plus the Lebesgue measure of C. Now the reason for this is because they're both measurable. These are both elements of the uh, set of measurable sets. And uh, the reason why they are measurable is due to the fact that measurable sets is a sigma algebra. C is just the complement of A, and A is the union of open intervals. And open intervals are measurable, as I proved. So by properties of sigma algebras, A and C have to be measurable sets. So now, the Lebesgue measure of A is equal to 1. Oh, the Lebesgue measure of 0, 1 is also equal to 1. Oh, well then, the Lebesgue measure of C has to be equal to 0. Whew. So basically, what we did was we looked at all the sets we were removing, showed they had Lebesgue measure 1, and so that this has to be the Lebesgue measure of 0. And that's it.